What's up guys and welcome to BIOS 3 Raw TV. Today I want to talk a little bit about mental dieting. What is mental dieting? Mental dieting is the mental part of dieting. Now what does that mean? Well dieting is 90% of what you're going to get you to your fitness goals whether it's weight loss, muscle gain, whatever. So the muscle gain have a tendency to kind of stuff yourself, eat more protein, eat more foods, etc. But the, the dieting down part is the hard part. Now there's two different kinds of diets, mental diets. There's the male diet and the female diet. Now, this disclaimer, this is not meant to be a sexist comment or anything like that. This is an observation that I've had over years of training both men and women. Men seem to have a lot easier time dieting down because they are focused on the task at hand and they do not have an emotional attachment to food most of the time. Most of the time, not all the time. Women, most of the time, seem to have a more emotional attachment to food. Where this comes from, I don't know. Why it's different for men and women, I don't know. But it's just a fact. I'm stating a fact that, you know, this is what I've observed over time. So, I get a lot of calls and a lot of emails and a lot of in-person things from my female clients when they are having really hard times in their diets. And it seems that if the diet doesn't work fast enough, which it should work fairly fast, they get upset, sometimes depressed, and will actually go off the diet and say the hell with it, and almost use the food to medicate, where they get more upset and depressed, whereas guys seem to get more pissed off and stay even more strict and push harder, and, you know, and the diet works. So it just depends on whether or not you have that emotional attachment to food as to whether you're going to go off the diet or not. I don't feel that it's whether the diet is hard, all diets are hard. I mean, every diet is hard, every competition is hard, it's, it never changes, it's harder than the one before. But depending on how you look at the food is whether you let the food get the best of you or not. So let me explain. If you look at food as fuel, so let's say your body is a $500,000 Ferrari and you roll up to the, uh, the gas pump, and I guarantee you're not gonna put regular gas there. You're gonna put the highest octane gas you can get in there and you're gonna make sure that thing is oil changed all the time. You're gonna make sure it's tuned up well, your body's a Ferrari, okay? It's not a Pinto. It's not a little piece of shit Chevette. It's a Ferrari, and it needs to be fed. It needs to be fed fuel. That food you're taking in is fuel. Fuel is not... There's no, no emotions to dieting. Dieting is not an emotional thing. It's a process that has to take place for you to get to your goals. So when you take the emotions out of the diet, all of a sudden now the diet becomes easier. Now, how do you do that? Well, gas for the car. So the next time you go to eat that cookie or whatever, and you're thinking about, well, I just want the cookie. I really like cookies. Think about it. What is the cookie? It's just fuel. So you don't need the cookie. That's not the high octane. That's the cheap regular stuff. The high octane, that's the protein and the sweet potato you're supposed to eat. So think about it. Try to detach yourself. The more detached you can get from the food, the better you'll be on your diet and the less issues you have trying to stay on your diet. Now, I know it's not easy. And I know there are also stuff like food addictions that are out there, where you have become so ingrained to eating certain foods that your brain has now remapped itself, and chemically, the dopamine levels and the serotonin levels go up when you eat certain foods. So therefore, you crave certain foods. Without them, the brain doesn't really know how to have that same effect. So instead of, you know, it normally producing those amounts of serotonin and dopamine, it only does it when you eat that cookie. Or it only does it when you eat that cake or that muffin or whatever you're probably not supposed to be eating on your diet. So there is more to it than just mind over matter. There is a chemical reaction that happens that um, Dr. Pam Peek is actually like the pioneer, the leader in this, this field. She's over here in D.C. And we're finding out now more and more that food addictions are real so that your brain actually needs certain foods. So it's something to be aware of too. And that's men and women both. It's not just women with the food addiction. So... I hope this can clear up a little bit of stuff about how dieting mental is. It is a physical thing, but it's more mental. It's 95% mental staying on your diet and getting to where you want to be. So next time you go to put that cookie in your mouth in your diet and you're worried that, oh man, I'm cheating and I, can't, I shouldn't do this, stop, take a deep breath, look at the food as fuel, and just resist. Resist for a couple of minutes because the urge will pass. It's like an itch. If you don't scratch an itch, it will go away. It's not going to be there for the rest of your life. BioS3 Training, gmail.com, the blog, www.bios3training.com, and we're out.